Hello, my name is Jeffrey Victor. I'm with the Metro Group. Recently, the City of New York has changed the responsibility of building owners in reference to doing some testing of cooling towers. Today, I'm going to show you how to do these tests and how to chart them on the compliance chart that Metro has made up. First test you're going to take is the pH test. And we have pH strips here. This is sample water that I've taken from the cooling tower. You just dish the pH strips right into the sample. You line up the colors, very simple. So we see here the pH of the cooling tower right now is eight that we have to deal with. On the chart, we have values here. The first one is the sample of the system that we're taking. If you have multi-cooling towers, in one building, you would write down which uh, floor they're on, the location, the sample time you're taking, the sample date, and the initial of the person that is doing the testing. First thing here we have is pH value. So the pH test that I did was eight. We marked down eight on the pH value. Next one we have is the temperature and the conductivity. We have here a conductivity meter the way this works is you press it once and then the light will start flashing in a minute. Flashes quickly. When the flashing slows down, you put it in your solution, cooling tower water, move it around a couple of times. Then eventually it will stop flashing. If it stops flashing, you take it out and you read it. The temperature is 70 degrees Fahrenheit and the conductivity is 800. So what I would do is I'd mark down the temperature of the water when I was taking it and then also the conductivity. The last thing you're going to be doing is a chlorine test. We do a free and total chlorine. On our liquid products we do a total chlorine test. So first you do a free test. It can be done in two different ways. Right here I filled it up to the 25 milliliter line. You can do it with 25 milliliters. Then each drop that we're going to be adding is equal to 0.2. If you fill it to the 10 milliliters, each drop will be 0.5. So right now I have the 25 milliliter line. So on the instructions it tells you very simple. Put in two scoops of the powder, put in two level scoops, got one, you have two. If you're righty, you put the vial in your right hand and you stir it. And it may be hard to see, but it's a very, very faint pink that you have there. What we're doing now is we're taking the 871 titration solution and we're going to add drop by drop until the color turns clear. So if I'm righty, I put it in my right hand and swirl. When you add the drops, you always add the drops straight down. So I go one and I swirl and as you can see, it has changed to clear already. So that means it has a 0.2 ppm of free chlorine. But with our products that we use, the liquids, we use total chlorine to give us the really true value. So now we're adding reagent number three. We're adding five drops. Again, you're adding straight down. One, two, three, four, five. Swirl it. And you can see you got pink again. Now we're going to add these drops. So, so far we have one drop. So now we're going to add more drops. So we go two, three, and it has become clear, but you have to wait a minute to see if the color has come back. So as you can see, the pink color has come back. So, so far we have three drops, we have four drops, and it's five drops. So with five drops, we're totally clear. We wait another minute to see if it has changed again. So with five drops, and each drop is worth 0.2, that means we have one ppm of free chlorine. 
So on our chart here, it tells you your bacteria uh, total chlorine level, that would be one ppm. If you're using the solids, right, we test for bromine, not chlorine. And what you do then is you take your original sample where you're doing the free chlorine. So let's say we have two drops of free chlorine. You multiply that, so if they're at the 25 milliliter level, so that would be 0.4. So you go 0.4 times 2.25, and that would get us 0.9. So we have 0.9 of bromine solution in there. The last one is our dip slides. Now we recommend that Metro does the dip slide test for you weekly because this has to culture for 72 hours and then from the culture that is formed, we look at the amount of dots in there and based on the amount of dots, we can tell you exactly how much bacteria has grown in there. And based on the amount that has grown, it tells you what reactions or what has to be done Either we have to increase the biocides or do a uh, disinfection of the tower. So it's always good that the Metro Group does that. The rest of the columns are the quarterly testing that we do during our observation of the compliance programs. Thank you very much.